It's about human beings and the relationships between human beings. But for me, when you're dealing with the vastness of the universe, it's going to have to be the most ambitious film you've done. And that takes a number of different forms. He loves to work from reality. When we turn around and say, uh oh, a dust storm, you figured you were going to just look at an empty landscape and that they'd put it in later for us so we would have to pretend. No. Chris wants to always do as much as you can, practical. I mean, if, if you can achieve it in camera, that's always the goal. If you're shooting someplace that's cold, I find it helpful to feel the cold. How would you re recreate the biggest glacier in Europe in a studio? You wouldn't. He takes us to these exotic locations and creates a planetary atmosphere. He's filling the screen with a real image that feels real because it is real. The initial impetus for the, the project had been to say, why not examine real possibilities? Where has the world got to in terms of its thinking about gravity being able to traverse dimensions, the gravitational lensing, the effects of gravity and light around the black hole? Why not actually look at the real science there? Luckily, we had Kip, and Kip is the foremost authority on all things gravitational. The thing that makes this different is that real science was woven into this film from the beginning and woven in deeply. The visual effects department under Paul Franklin and everybody at Double Negative took Kip's data and they created real visual representations. What the algorithms gave us was extremely spectacular. Neither wormholes nor black holes have been depicted in any Hollywood movie in the way that they actually would appear. This is the first time that the depiction began with Einstein's general relativity equations from the outset. We're building very, very realistic sets that can be completely 360 and contained. It can really put the audience into the shoes of the astronauts who are exploring these new worlds, new galaxies. The sets that we shot on back in Los Angeles were pretty incredible. We actually built pretty much everything for real. We have them on big gimbals so they can go vertically, so we can go zero G. Everything was on hydraulics, everything had movement. You can't tell that this was made for a movie. You want it to look like it was made for real. We wanted to try and create a much more real environment for the actors inside the spaceships rather than relying on green screens. We didn't use any green screens. We were very interested in the way that perhaps visual effects have been created in the past before computers came along. Combining that with the power of modern digital technologies, the idea of creating space environments live on the stage. If you could create imagery which you could show on the set, actually make it part of the set, it gave it an instant reality. Well, if there was ever a movie to use IMAX on, let's face it, go to space, use IMAX. The camera department had to take a very experimental approach to the way we wanted to shoot the film with the IMAX cameras. We wanted to do a lot of handheld camera. We wanted to do a lot of camera mounts. Mounts on the exteriors of ships, really treating an IMAX camera like a GoPro camera. We actually mounted on, on, on helmets, we mounted on spaceships, we mounted on bodies. Think about the fact that NASA sent uh, IMAX cameras up to space and they can film with that camera in very small spaces. By doing that, you create a very specific feeling and we want to replicate that. It still is a film that's set in a future where the world is essentially telling us our time is done here and we have to leave the nest and, and move outwards into the rest of the universe. This is the mission we were trained for. I've got kids, Professor. Get out there and save them. Space travel has always been that ultimate challenge. Right from the beginning, we've been explorers and adventurers and humankind's impetus to break boundaries and, and look beyond where they sit right now. That's a very exciting thing that distinguishes us. I'm hopeful that Interstellar uh, will tap into people's rekindling interest in, in those kind of things. Here we go. Murph. You have to talk to me, Murph. 
I need to fix this before I go. You have no idea when you're coming back. I'm coming back. <laughs> Imagine McConaughey seeming so perfect for the part. He is so much the sort of laconic, almost cowboy, pilot-type presence, the sort of Chuck Yeager idea that we're really trying to get to from, from the right stuff. I love what he brought to Cooper. I felt he did something every single day that surprised me. Cooper, he's a man out of time. He's not supposed to be a farmer. He's not supposed to be grounded. He's supposed to be up there. Here we go.